Well, welcome to the latest episode of our Ag Plus Bio Plus Science podcast, presented by Agrinovus Indiana and Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick, the host of Inside Indiana Business, also the host of this weekly podcast, where we have in-depth uh, conversations with leaders, innovators, entrepreneurs in Indiana's ag bioscience sector. It's the sector where food, agriculture, science, and technology all converge. This week, excited to sit down with Evan Rochford, the CEO of Nutramaze. And Evan, welcome to the uh, podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, give us a little bit. The, the Nutramaze is a fascinating story, and you've got orange corn, mm-hmm. right? So that in and of itself is is interesting. But give us a little bit of, of your background and, and uh, your path uh, to starting Nutramaze. Yeah, so I think that it's, it's interesting because my co-founder is also my father. And so my path to Nutramaze kind of started long before I realized it did. And, and you know, when I was growing up, I was, uh, you know, exposed to my father's work. I started working in the cornfields, pollinating corn when I was, you know, in, uh, a teenager. Mm-hmm. And, and your uh, dad was a professor at Purdue, right? Yeah, he's a professor at Purdue. Now he, uh, he was at Illinois before that. And when I first started out in the cornfields, my father, he'd meet his colleagues out there and they would, you know, be totally geeking out about the angle of the leaves and the structure <laughs> of the tassel and, and all these things. And I was like... I was like, what? What are you guys talking about? And then, you know, the, the more time that I spent around the plants and working with them, I really started to see the beauty in, in the genetic diversity of corn and how there is, there's so much natural variation. And, you know, a corn plant isn't just a corn plant. You know, I first got out there, I was like, oh, it's just corn, right? But mm-hmm. there's actually this, this huge amount uh, of diversity that, that you can work with. Nutramase. How to talk about the formation, the creation of Nutramase, and this this orange corn. Mm-hmm. I know uh, folks can't see the corn uh, that you have here uh, at, at our podcast mm-hmm. studio, but it is unique in that mm-hmm. it is very orange. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, my uh, my father is my co-founder. He he is the one who sort of originated this variety. He started working on it in the mid 1990s, and so he's a geneticist and plant breeder and so he's really spent his career figuring out what the genes uh, that already exist in corn Mm -hmm. uh, what they influence in in terms of expression in the plant and so in the mid-1990s he got really interested in carotenoids which are natural antioxidant pigments the same things that make carrots orange and he really wanted to, to kind of find out you know yellow corn has a little bit of carotenoids could we breed varieties that have more, right? Could we make corn more nutritious? And could we do it just through breeding and selection, right? Not by introducing, you know, genes from other plants and using and, uh, using transgenic technologies. And uh, a lot of people didn't think that, you know, it was really going to be possible to, to, to get to the levels um, they wanted to achieve. But, you know, he, he uh, found the diversity and he's, he's been working on it for, for more than 20 years. And, um, and so he started it in the mid mid '90s, and in the early 2000s, a program called Harvest Plus started. And Harvest Plus is a international biofortification effort. And so what that means is the goal is to naturally breed varieties of staple crops that are more nutritious. And so, you know, in the instance of corn, in a lot of places in sub-Saharan Africa, white corn is the primary staple crop, right? So people might even get the majority of their of their calories in a day from corn. So the idea is that it's really difficult to change people's, you know, eating behaviors and, cult, you know, cultural preferences and, and even production practices. And so... The idea with biofortification is rather than going in and saying, hey, you know, uh, you need to grow a different crop. It's saying, look, you can keep eating corn, just, you know, use this variety that's Mm -hmm. more nutritious. And so it plugs right into the infrastructure, right into, you know, the cultural practices. And it's a really effective way to deliver more nutrition on a population wide scale. Talk about the the acceptance, the traction that Nutramase uh, is getting. Uh, you mentioned being able to uh, help feed the world and mm-hmm. nutrition issues and those types of things. But overall, what's been the uh, what's been the, the market reaction? Yeah, and so I'll just I'll clarify. You know, so so we are um, you know partnering with the uh, organization Harvest Plus mm-hmm. uh, to help promote things globally. But as a company, we're really focusing here in the United States and in North America, and here the reaction has really been overwhelmingly positive you know so we've had uh, a lot of people you know a lot of online reviews talking about our product uh, which we currently sell uh, on Amazon 
grits, you know, minimally processed. We just take the corn and we we, we mill it, and, uh, and you know, you can cook it up. We've had people just talking about how they're the best grits they've ever had. You know, that they have this creamy texture. They have a richer flavor that's nutty and buttery. And, you know, because for the most part, corn, corn's kind of just been a bland Mm -hmm. starch, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's been fairly basic. And so, you know, we're really trying to, uh, to elevate that. And, And I think one of the things that really differentiates us from, uh, you know, traditional, let's say plant breeding and genetics company, is you know their their customer is the farmer who's focused you know almost entirely on yield, and because that's how they make their money by selling mm-hmm. selling more corn. Whereas we're we're using a different kind of business model, which I call a consumer focused agriculture um, business model, where we're you know we're we're controlling everything through contract production from the breeding uh, and seed production to the growing, the processing, and then the sale of the final product. And by doing that, we're able to focus on breeding for traits that are really important to the consumer, like flavor, you know, like texture, like nutrition. And then we're able to go all the way back to the beginning and and bring that through and, and capture that added value. You mentioned the consumer, uh, and you're selling on on Amazon, mm-hmm. but you're also, I believe, in some restaurants uh, as well, right? Talk about yeah, that. yeah, that's right. So we've had a really good reaction from chefs. Um, actually, a number of the uh, Upland Brewing Company locations mm-hmm. is now uh, featuring the grits, and you know. People really, uh, the chefs really like the, you know, the uniqueness of the product. The, I mean, there's the culinary attributes, which I've discussed, but one of the other things that, that's appealing to restaurants is it has a really great origin story, right? So this is something that they can talk to um, their patrons about and, and really have sort of that um, nice interaction around a food product that isn't just, you know, your standard thing. It's something that's really uh, interesting and it also is making a difference. You were part of uh, Agrinovus's Ag Plus Bio Plus Science Startup Showcase. You walked away with the uh, People's Choice uh, Award, which is very exciting. But also, uh, you participated in the Forbes Ag Tech Summit in Indianapolis. You've do- done other entrepreneurial uh, events around the state. Any events that stand out? And, and from a startup standpoint, what are the benefits of these kinds of events? Yeah, so I think, you know, I'll, I'll kind of answer this um, a little bit more broadly. Rather than talking about a specific event, I think that, you know, both those events that you mentioned and, um, you know, some of the ones, other ones that Agronovis puts on, they, they're really, they're great for me uh, and I think for other uh, ag bioscience entrepreneurs because the ag biosciences are a pretty different business than, say, technology, you know, B2B SaaS. Um, you know, I have a, I have a friend who's a, has a, has a B2B SaaS company and, you know, I asked him, oh, hey, what's your, like, what's your long-term goals? Like, what's, you know, he's like, you mean like the next 18 months? And I'm like, that's my inventory planning cycle. Um, you know, so it's a really, it's a different kind of time scale when you're looking to do something with, uh, a, you know, a, a product that has to grow and there's a, there's a growing season. And even if you're selling, you know, software, you know, farmers, mm-hmm. you know, they have their growing season and there's, there's a sale, natural sales cycle there. And so I think that, what Agronovus is doing and what the Forbes Ag Tech Summit is doing and, and convening this community that, you know, has has those things in common um, is, is really powerful, you know, and, and, and that's one of the things I was really excited about uh, the new Quadrant event that Agronovus launched because I think that, you know, as an entrepreneur, your... Um, your coworkers, I mean, you have people in your company, but also mm-hmm. kind of your coworkers are the other people in in the entrepreneurial ecosystem, mm-hmm. right? They're kind of your peers, um, so it's great to to see them and to catch up with them, and but also really to share those experiences that you know help you kind of navigate this mm-hmm. this interesting journey. You know, all startups um, have to be ready, have to be quick to adapt, change course when necessary. Um, What are some of the uh, challenges that you faced as an entrepreneur and maybe learned uh, from uh, fellow ag tech entrepreneurs at the same time? Yeah, sure. You know, I think that, you know, people talk about, you know, pivoting, right, and and, and being, being ready to adapt. And I think those are you know, it's really important. It's really important to be able to recognize when something's not working, right? You don't want to be you don't want to be too invested in a bad idea, right? Um, you know, you don't want to let just let inertia carry you carry you on when that's not the direction you should be going in. At the same time, 
there's kind of the, on the flip side, there's focus, right? Mm -hmm. And when you start a company and you have a new product, it's, you know, it's really exciting. It's like, everything's new and, and, you know, and then you keep going and, and then it's really more about repeating and, and systematizing and ma maintenance and, 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 and maybe it's not quite as sexy. Um, and so there's that part of you that, that wants to kind of have that, that, that excitement and that rush from, uh, you know, doing something new and, um, that can be, that can be really dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. like you, you can get shiny object syndrome. You can, you can overcommit yourself. You can pull yourself in too many different directions. You can not support, you know, the things that you're already doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, in my, in my, um, a business that I, I started before NutriMaze, I really, I learned, uh, that lesson the hard way, right? Mm -hmm. I went chasing after opportunity rather than really focusing on the fundamentals of mm -hmm. the business and making sure that we were on, on sure footing. And so, um, you know, that's definitely something I've talked about with other entrepreneurs. And, and, and like I, I mentioned, having that community and sharing those experiences and, you know, being able to bounce ideas and, you know, how you're kind of feeling and, and, and thinking about things um, off someone, you know, or with someone mm -hmm. that has sort of that shared experience of having to kind of navigate, you know, these choppy waters. Yep. Final question for you. What can we expect? What's next uh, for Nutramaze? Yeah, so, you know, I just mentioned focus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that, you know, for us it's interesting because, you know, we're working with we're working with corn and there's like a thousand different things you can do with corn. And so uh, focus definitely has been something that we've had to actively, you know, make sure is a priority. And because long term, we have a lot of different opportunities that we could pursue. You know, there's, there's opportunities in the animal feed markets, right. Uh, to promote animal health. There's opportunities in, you know, working with large CPG companies and, and, you know, maybe supplying an ingredient to make a cereal or something like that. But sort of, I think that in the near term, what we're really focusing on is, is, doing the research and development that we need so that we're ready to scale, that we're ready mm -hmm. to take on some of these broader opportunities. And we actually recently uh, received uh, a phase two National Science Foundation STTR award, which is uh, about seven hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So that will that will really fund our R and D program for the next two years and get us ready to sort of take that next step, that that leap into these these broader markets. But in the meantime, you know we're really going to be focusing on building our own brand, Professor Torbert's Orange Corn, and really focusing on bringing that to as many people, getting retail placement. You know, I mean, the ultimate goal is to become a nationally distributed and recognized mm -hmm. retail brand. Um, but that doesn't happen overnight, and it's not mm -hmm. something uh, that you can kind of do on the side. You know, this is, this is really right now recognizing, you know, what we've recognized is we have a really great product that we're selling right now. And so now it's about executing, you know, that plan to, to take it to the next level rather than going off and, and, and chasing some of these, you know, big opportunities, knowing that those are on the horizon, preparing ourselves mm -hmm. to one day pursue those, but maintaining that focus on what do we need to do today, next week, next month to, make those incremental steps mm -hmm. to take this to, to where it needs to go. Evan Rochford is the CEO of Nutramaze. It's uh, an exciting uh, and very interesting egg bioscience uh, company. Evan, thanks for being on the podcast yeah, this thanks, week, and thanks. good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks uh, again, Evan, for your insights into the ag bioscience space and uh, for joining us today on the Ag Plus Bio Plus Science podcast. This is a weekly production partnership between Agrinovas Indiana and Inside Indiana Business. And before we leave you this week, uh, a reminder, Agrinovas Indiana has announced the date for its 2019 Ag Bioscience Innovation Summit. That date is November 20. November 20, and this year uh, I'll be uh, joining as a featured speaker. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so to learn more about the November 20th Ag Bioscience Innovation Summit, just visit agronobusindiana.com backslash summit. It is and promises to be a great event. And thanks for joining us on this latest edition of our podcast. I'm Gary Dick. We'll see you next time. This podcast is a product of Inside Indiana Business, hosted by Gary Dick. Produced by Libby Fritz and Joe Ullery and was recorded on location at Launch Fishers. More people get Indiana Business News from inside Indiana Business than any other source.